So good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Kindly open cam, everybody. So, we acknowledge the presence of 36 participants. Where are the others? Kindly inform them that we are about to resume. Okay, so a while back we have discussed the subjects under criminal investigation. So for this afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, we will be proceeding with the intelligence discussion. Okay, so not to waste much of our time, allow me to share my screen. But before I do that, before we do that, kindly raise your notebook again. May I see your notebooks and pen? So, Mendoza, where's your notebook? Rafael, okay. The Chavez, Frederick. Okay, Gasser, yes. I said notebook, not forehead. Show me your notebook, not your forehead. Okay, okay, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. So, allow me to share my screen. Mm -hmm. It's my presentation. Wait lang ah. Di kumano. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, can you see my... Stand in ocean. That's when Crixus was swept from the shores of the living. They about to offer opportunity to swim can in a sea of screen, Roman blood. Hola. Sir, what up? What do you see on your screen? What's your intelligence? Okay na po, sir. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Guys, can you see my screen? Yes po, sir. Ah, magsalita kayo para alam ko kung meron o wala. Okay, so we will be discussing intelligence. May I be excused for a while? There's something wrong with the laptop. It's bugging. It's slowing down. We have to close some apps. So, hopefully, it will work now.
Kindly bear with me, class. I don't know what happened to this laptop. It's working just right. Just fine. And this afternoon, it, uh, it's slowing down. So we don't have to discuss the history of intelligence because anyways, it's not part of the new table of specification for the criminology licensure examination. So in the interest of time, we'll be skipping these discussions and go to where we have to discuss. So under intelligence, the important topics here are the difference between informants again and informer the different types of informants and informer in the field of intelligence not in the field of investigation the intelligence cycle and the distinction of classified matters so are you still with me guys yes po Mm, I got it. This PowerPoint presentation has so uh, large memory, which uh, causes it to lag.
So we have here the Mossad, the intelligence agency of Israel. Okay, so let's discuss intelligence. What is intelligence? Based on Webster, the capacity for understanding and for other forms of adaptive intellect of behavior. So when we say adaptive intellect, intellect that we can learn from others. Diba? So intelligence also means mind in operation. So operation within the mind. We so say mind in work or the working mind the power of meeting any situation especially a noble situation successfully by proper behavior adjustment so this is in the field of psychology so that is intelligence we act and adjust accordingly yeah. so proper behavior adjustments so depending on the scenario or in the situation our behavior should adjust so intelligence also means the ability to apprehend or understand the interrelationship of presented facts in such a way as to guide action towards goal so if that's our goal how should we attain our goal so this is our goal. This is the problem. What should we do to solve the problem and to achieve our goal? So if we were able to answer that, that's part of the intelligence. Intelligence may also mean the knowledge regarding an event. Yeah. So if we are knowledgeable, knowledgeable on intelligence, and knowledgeable on history, I mean, that is a form of intelligence. Now, question. History is one of the boring subjects, sabi ng karamihan. But why do we have to keep on learning those? Why? Because, ladies and gentlemen, history repeats itself. So, naulit yung history. Yung mga experience ng mga past na tao ngayon, ay noon, eh, pwede rin nating ma-experience. Meron at meron yan. That's why we have to learn history. So as to learn from the mistake and from the past events. So the gathering or distribution of information. So that is also intelligence. We gather information. After gathering information, we distribute this information to the end users or to those higher apps who has the need to know of such information. So, based on psychology, intelligence is the capacity of a person to adjust to a new situation through the use of what has been previously learned. Okay, so we learned that it's going to rain later and you have the plan of going out. So, what should you do? What should you bring? How should you adjust? Diba? So, probably you will be wearing capotes or bringing up umbrella. Diba? So, behavior adjustments according to government commission task force intelligence means the collection processing collation interpretation evaluation and dissemination of information with reference to national security so when we say national security it involves the security of the whole philippines to include the security of government the whole government and its government forces to include the community herein okay so that's the definition of inform intelligence based on the definition provided for by the commission government commission task force according to military terminology These are the definition of intelligence. So intelligence is the end product. Okay? So it is the end product resulting from 
these processes, the following processes. First, just like your investigation and just like your research, it starts with the collection or gathering of data or information, followed by the evaluation of the collected information, the analysis of those information, and the integration of the analysis with other information, or in short, we call it triangulation or rectangulation. Diba? We can also apply here your uh, induction reasoning and deductive reasoning. So that is still part of your integration. And after the integration, here comes now the interpretation. So in research, we call it conclusion. Okay? So if that's what we gather, if that's what the data shows, what is the meaning of that data? Diba? So anong ibig niya sabihin? Anong gusto niyang ipahiwatin? That's the interpretation. Of all available information, which may have immediate, mabilisan, or potential significance, kailangan, to the development and execution of plans, policies, and programs of the users. So that is your military definition of intelligence. So according to police parlance, intelligence is defined as the end product resulting from still similar process. Collection, evaluation, analysis, integration, and interpretation of all available information regarding, so this is where the difference is, regarding activities of criminal and other law violators. Okay? For the purpose of affecting criminals and other law violators for, for their arrest, obtaining evidence, and forestalling plan to commit crime. Okay? So, forestall, forestalling plan to commit crime, in short, is crime detection. Okay. So, that's how the police define intelligence. Unlike your military intelligence, its purpose is for national security. Yan. Which may have immediate or potential significance to the development and execution of plans, policies, and programs for the users. So who are the users? Of course, our executive officers. So we have broad categories of intelligence. Oops. So first on the list is national intelligence. So when we, when we say national intelligence, national, from the word national, it involves the whole state or the whole country. It refers to the integrated product of intelligence developed by all government departments from the Philippine Army, the Philippine National Police, the local community, all joined together. Yeah. So we now have NICA, the National Intelligence Coordinating Agency. Yeah. So those intelligence coming from the NICA are considered as national intelligence. It concerns the broad aspects of national policy and similarly national security. So when we say national policy, the creation of law. Okay. If there is a certain problem, probably we can solve that problem through the creation of law. We call it national policy. And if there is a problem with our security, let's say for example, China or some foreign country is about to invade us, then we have to enhance our national security. So that's your national security and national policy. 
Second is the department intelligence. So this is the type of intelligence required by an agency or department of the government in order to execute its mission and discharge its responsibilities. So an example to this is the intelligence coming from the Philippine National Police. Diba? So that is a part or an example of the Department Intelligence. So what's all about the intelligence of the PNP? It is more on all of the database of criminal, their modus operandi, and probably coming from the records of the United Nations, and uh, not only United Nations, the record of the Interpol, the organized criminal group. Yeah. So that's what we call Department Intelligence. It is used for the discharge of function. So we need this intelligence for us to be able to attain our mission. What's our mission? What's the mission of the BNP? To maintain peace and order, ensure public safety. Diba? So what are the two main Objectives of the PNP, in short, crime prevention. And if we were not able to prevent crime, at least we should be able to solve those unprevented crimes. Now, how do we solve crimes? By through the conduct of investigation, diba? gathering of evidence against the perpetrator and filing the appropriate charges against him, proving his guilt in the court. Until such time that he will be convicted and serve his sentence. So as to serve as a deterrent, a deterrence to would-be offenders. The deterrent, deterrence effect. It will deter would-be offenders. Same is true with the armed forces of the Philippines. Diba? If they have the intelligence regarding a foreign country who is about to invade Philippines, let's say for example China, then we call it Department Intelligence of whom? Of the Philippine Army. Yan. So, what is the primary function of the Philippine Army? External security. How about the Philippine National Police? Internal security. So when we say external security, the difference between these two agencies is uh, when we say external security, the Philippine Army defends the Philippines from oppressors, mga mananakop, from external threats, other countries. Unlike the Philippine National Police, the Philippine National Police protects its citizens. Against whom? Against the criminal within the Philippines. Ayan. So, internal security. So, kasama na dyan ang mga NPA and criminals. So, next is the military intelligence. So, military intelligence is that intelligence used in the preparation and execution of military plans, policies, and programs. Okay? So, it is specified specifically the concentration of it is for the execution of military plans, policies, and programs. So, military intelligence. So, we have broad fields of military intelligence. So, first on the list is the strategic intelligence. So, if you're done with your review on planning, you, may, you might have a discussed already strategic plans, diba? to which you discovered that strategic plans are these plans that are long-term in nature, pangmatagalan. So same is true with strategic intelligence. It is long-term in nature. It is that knowledge pertaining to the following. First is the capabilities, vulnerabilities, and the probable courses of action of foreign nation. Okay? So that is under the military intelligence, strategic intelligence. We have to determine the capabilities or the strength of our 
prospect enemy foreign country. So, China siguro. Dapat alam natin yung mga capabilities niya. Next is the vulnerabilities or its weaknesses. Ano kaya ang weaknesses ni China? Para pagkasasakupin niya tayo, at least may laban tayo. Doon natin siya titirahin sa kanyang weakness. Diba? That's your vulnerability. And probable courses of action. So, what are the possible courses of action? If we stay calm, what would be the probable courses of China? Ano kayong gagawin ng China? But if we will be, let's say for example, defending, showing our interest in fighting, what would be the probable courses of the China troops? Diba? So that's part of the strategic intelligence. So what are probable courses of action? It refers to the courses of action open to a nation that may be adapted for accomplishing its national objective. So what is the national objective of the military again? The Philippine Army? Defend Philippines from external threat. Okay. So next, of course, to strategic intelligence. This is how the the uh, this is how war military intelligence is being conducted before. If you are not speaking kindly, mute yourself, ladies and gentlemen. You are uh, disturbing the whole class. Can you check your mic? Okay. So, how do they do this? They check and count possible ship, enemy ship coming to their territory. Why? Because one way of measuring whether or not we can uh, we can defeat the enemy is by counting their number, di ba? So pag marami ang kalaban, kukunti tayo. Medyo tagilid, medyo malabo, di ba? Pero kung mas marami tayo, kukunti ang kalaban, mas may possibility na manalo tayo. Depending na lang on the skills and the weapons. If we are like the Spartans 300 versus thousands of uh, of uh, ano, mga Indian warriors, then probably we can beat them, di ba? Why? Because young, nine years old pa lang yung mga, yung mga Romans, they are known, nati-training na sila, di ba? For war. So next, ah, okay. So under strategic intelligence, we have the components. Okay. So, the components of strategic intelligence are as follows. The pets bugs. Pets involves political. So, who is the political head of this country? Diba? Because probably, if we can control the political head of the country, we can, we can control the, the whole country. Diba? So, ganyan gumagalaw ang mga organized crime group. Diba? Malaki ang suhol sa mga politician. Kaya madaling nakapag-smuggled ng illegal goods ang huh? OCG economic so how about its economy malakas ba ang economy niya may marami marami bang export itong bansa na to kumikita ba from its export or nalulugi how about telecommunications and transportation if in case we will be attacking this country does it have a communication telecommunication makakatawag kaya to ng feedback ng backup O hindi. Di ba? At transportation, may makakarating kaya na backup? Wala. Sociological, how does the person looks like and how do they socialize? Ano bang itsura nila? Ano ang kinabubuhay nila? Gano sila kalalakas? Ano bang mga itsura nila? Di ba? Biographic, yan. So, ano bang lahi nila? Sila ba yung mga lahing malalakas? Mga lahing matatangkad? Lahing mahihina? Lahing magaganda? Lahing tulog nung biniyayaan ng Panginoon ng magagandang muka? And the armed forces capabilities. So, meron ba silang mga air forces? 
diba? What are their weapon risks? Geographic location. So, what are the advantageous position? San bang high ground nila? Why? Because high grounds usually are strategic locations in terms of war. And scientific. So, gano ba katatalino in terms of science yung mga tao dito? Can they formulate their own nuclear weapon? Or can they formulate their own biological weapon? Such as anthrax? Such as COVID-24? So, we have here an image of the Vietnam armies. We call them the Viet Cong. Okay? So, this is their strategy. Someone here would appear and would lure the U.S. troops. So, magpapahabol siya. Ngayon, pag nagpahabol, biglang magtatago, mawawala. And here comes the other parties here, part of the Viet Cong. They would ambush the U.S. troops. Yan. So, meron na rin dito mga mag-ambush. Yan. Yan. Okay? And after that, bigla silang mawawala na parang ninja. So, they have their underground tunnels. So, mawawala, tapos dilipat from one location to another, tapos biglang mamime, magkakaroon. Nandun na siya. Di ba? Now, if in case the U.S. troops would be discovering their secret, the underground, they have booby traps along the way. Yan. So, meron din silang mga plant na booby traps, mga land mines. Yan. Diba? They also have their hospital. The Viet Cong have their hospital. Stock rooms. Dormitory, tulugan. Well, source of water. And the kitchen. So, that's how strategic Viet Cong were during World War II. So, next to strategic um, military strategic intelligence is the military combat intelligence. So, when we say combat, we are dealing with action, with firefight. Okay? So, combat intelligence is used in planning. And conducting tactical and administrative operations. So take note, ladies and gentlemen, that it includes here tactical, so the techniques in operation, and also administrative operations. So when we say administrative operations, it includes here the logistical support needed, the deployment of personnel, the financial support needed, the equipment, vehicles, and weapons ammunitions, and so on and so forth. Supply, foods, water, and of thinking capacity. That is under administrative. While in tactical, it pertains to the techniques of operation. Diba? Okay, okay. So the components of our combat intelligence include wet, with meaning people, weather, enemy and terrain. So if we have a mission of raiding a base of the NPA, we should consider these components in our planning, the poet. So what type of people are in our subject area, in our target area? Are they friendly? Do we have a friendly force there? Or are they all NPAs? How about the weather? Is it going to rain or is it going to be sunny? It's gonna be sunny. If it's sunny, will it be advantageous on our part or disadvantageous? If it rain, for sure it will be disadvantageous on our part. Why? Because they have their shelter, they will not get sick, while we, we might get sick. Diba? Pwedeng trang kasuhin. And the enemy, how does the enemy look? Like, what are their weapons? Where are their possible locations? Diba? 
and terrain. Where are the secret passages? Where are the shortcuts? Where are the way to the high grounds? Where are the way to the water resources? Where is the way to the community? Yeah. So we should have gathered information on those components of combat intelligence before we go to war. So the Spartan 300. Can you see the strategy with the uh, what do you call this? The combat intelligence of the Greeks here, the Spartan 300. If you can see, they are this colored blue here, di ba? Mangilan ilan lang sila. They are only 300. Compared with the Persians, they are thousands. Now, they are very strategic, di ba? They have this combat intelligence to which if they meet in an open area, the Persians, of course, these 300 Spartans, could be hit, could be defeated easily. Pwede silang mapalibutan, pabilog, di ba? Paikot. However, if they will be waiting for the Persians in this area here, and with the use of their, uh, the predecessor of the CDM, the Civil Disturbance Management, with the use of their shield and their spear and their arrows, yan, they have the chance of winning. Diba? That's how strategic the, the Romans are, the Spartan 300. Now, the only factor that caused the defeat of the Spartan 300 is the traitor who sold the secret passage here from the back diba? to the Persian in exchange of gold. Yan, di ba? So, parang yung kwento lang ng Pilipinas na tirad pas. Di ba? So, mayroon tong traitor na nagturo ng sikretong daanan. Thereby causing the Spartan 300 to be defeated. So, the last branch of intelligence under military intelligence is the counterintelligence oh, military counterintelligence so when we say counterintelligence its purpose is to deny information to the enemy increases the security of the command and aids in achieving surprise okay so it consists of the following we have passive measures and active Measures. When we say passive measures, these are measures to which the personnel doesn't have to do anything. All they have to do is to shut their mouth. Diba? <laughs> Mananahimik lang. Passive measures. Walang kailangan gawin na action. Unlike your active measures, it requires an action. Diba? It requires something to be done. So what again is the Main purpose of counterintelligence, when we say counterintelligence, when we say intelligence, ladies and gentlemen, the objective is to gather information, okay, about the enemy. And when we say counterintelligence, we protect our vital information against the oppressors, diba? So that's your counterintelligence. We protect our vital information, our secrets, for it not to be stolen by the spies, by the enemy. Yan, diba? Kasi pagka nalaman ng kalaban, ng competitor natin, ng sekreto natin, talo tayo automatically, di ba? So that's the essence of counterintelligence. Now, under passive in, passive measures, we have the following, secrecy discipline, okay? So wala kang ibang gagawin dito, all you have to do is manahimik lang. What you hear, what you see, when you live, leave it there, di ba? Huwag mo nang ikwento, ipaalam sa iba. And next is the security of classified matters or classified information. Here comes your top secret, secret, confidential, and uh, ano ba tong isa? Secret, top secret, confidential, 
ha? Ano ito isa? O, later on, maalala natin. To include movement control. So, when we say movement control, ang lalagay lang natin dito is, uh, an example of this is the no trespassing. O, diba? Unauthorized personnel. Keep out. Diba? So, movement control. O kaya, one, uh, one example to this is the placing of uh, barricade along the base. Diba? Maglalagay tayo ng mga wall surrounding our base. Tapos, maglalagay lang tayo ng isang gate. So, means to say, dun sa gate, dun lang pwede pumasok yung mga bisita natin. O kaya, kahit na kalaban. Hindi sila pwedeng dumaan sa wall. Diba? So, at least, hindi tayo, kampante tayo na ano, na hindi mas saan saan manggagaling yung mga bisita natin. Isa lang ang babantayan natin. Isa lang yung pagdedeployan natin ng guardia doon lang sa gate, di ba? So those are example of our movement control under the passive measures. Now, under passive measures also includes camouflage. So what's the essence of camouflage? So especially if we are outnumbered by the enemy, kung hindi tayo marami yung kalaban, all we have to do is to Hide. Siyempre, hindi naman tayo pwedeng makipagsabayan. Marami nga sila. Lalo na pagka high-powered ang mga weapons nila, tayo low-power lang. Tapos to consider their manpower, their strength. Madami sila, thousand sila, tayo 20 lang. Diba? So, all we have to do is to camouflage ourselves. Diba? For us to be kept unseen by them. Now, under active measures, we have the counter Reconnaissance. Okay? So if our enemy is reckoning our area, we have also to deploy counter reconnaissance to set them away from our area, from spying and documenting, from surveying our area. We also have counter espionage. When we say espionage, it is the act of spying, diba? Spy, espionage, stealing vital information, diba? espionage yun. So, counter espionage. We have to prevent the spies from gathering our vital information from spying us. Okay? We also have here counter sabotage. So, when we say sabotage, it is the act of destroying our vital installations. So, what are our vital installations, ladies and gentlemen? It belongs here, our power Sources, energy sources, water supply, to which if this were sabotaged by the enemy, we cannot transmit communication. Diba? Sinira ng NPA, yung ating uh, Beneco, Beneco, uh, Maynila, tubig. Diba? Meralco, yung kuryente. Kunwari, walang kuryente, brownout. Do you think do you think we can still send request for backup after three days of brownout? Hindi, di ba? Walang internet pag brownout. Wala ring, malamang wala ring power source, si Smart at Globe, di ba? So we cannot transmit communication. Pag nilason ang supply ng tubig, do you think we can survive? Kailangan natin ng tubig. So, inom tayo. Inilason yung tubig. Mamamatay tayo maaga. Di ba? That's sabotage. So, therefore, we have to do counter-sabotage. We have to detect these groups of sabotagers and set them away or apprehend them. When we say subversion, it is the act of harassing or kidnapping or acts of offensive uh, military actions against government troops and public officials. Yan, yung mga kidnap ng mga high profile, mga high ranking officials. Diba? Those are subversion. So, us, in our side, we should conduct counter subversion. We should protect our high ranking officials, our president, high ranking officials. Okay? So, those are active measures. So, the, the principles of intelligence operations are as follows. General, intelligence operations are influenced by elements of the operational environment. 
It includes the commander's mission. Okay, so what is the mission of the commander? To protect this AUR. Diba? So if you are the regional director, your, one of your mission is to protect your region. Diba? So it includes the commander's mission, limitation imposed by national policy or higher commands. So we also have limitations in power. Scale of use of nuclear and other weapons. The local, the nature of friendly and enemy forces, and the civil population in the area. So those are under general classification of intelligence. We have to gather all of those information. So what is the commander's need? Intelligence must fit the needs of the commander. Okay. So if the commander need information about the modus operandi of the criminal, then what the intelligence agents and the informants and the informers should be transmitting should be the modus operandi of the local criminals as well. Hindi naman na pwede na parang ganito lang, di ba? Common sense lang. Ay, anong pangalan mo? Tinanong ko nung bata. Anong pangalan mo? Tapos, ako po ay tao. Do you think your answer is correct? Tinatanong pangalan mo, tapos ang sagot mo, ikaw ay tao. Di ba? Mali. Yun. That's the essence. Di ba? Kung, kung pangalan ang tinatanong, sagutin mo. Pangalan. Pangalan yung nagsasagot mo. Kung di naman na tinatanong kung tao ka ba o bagay. Ano ka? Tao o bagay. Tao. Di ba? So, different commanders need information on different geographic areas. Some of their needs, however, are from overlapping areas. Plans, orders, and requests are concerned with definite areas, particularly the area of influence of the command. So, intelligence requires careful and thorough planning. It includes the anticipation of intelligence. Okay, so we also have to include anticipation. When we say anticipation, we foresee. Kung baga, huwulaan natin kung ano kayong possible na mangyayari. Di ba? The anticipation of intelligence needs. Ano kayong possible na kakailanganin natin. So, we have learned that this is the fact about uh, our target. Now, ano kayang susunod natin kakailanganin? O, di ba? Tapos, kung nalaman natin yung susunod na kakailanganin natin, then we should have to act on it, to gather information about it. So, use. Intelligence must be adequate for the purpose for which it is to be utilized. So, if the intelligence is to be, to be used for anti-criminality, then... Likewise, this intelligence should address questions on criminality. Di ba? So, asan yung mga locations ng criminal? Saan sila nagtatago? Yan. Timeliness. So, this is the most important aspect of intelligence. By the way, keep this in mind, ladies and gentlemen. Ha? Timeliness is the most important aspect of intelligence. Intelligence must reach the user in time to serve as a basis for appropriate action. So, why did we say that timeliness is the most important? Take this into consideration. We have a troop on the field. They are having an encounter at that specific area and they had requested an intelligence. So, tumawag sa tactical operation center natin. Do we have a friendly force in the area? We are being ambushed. This is our location. Please feedback ASAP. Ngayon, itong nasa tactical operation center, hinanap niya lahat ng mga malalapit na troops. Kahit na yung malayo, idinagdag niya. Diba? So, kinumpleto niya yung information. Pero, nung binato niya yung information, too late na. Patay na yung mga tropa. Diba? So, Completeness versus timeliness, mas important si timeliness. It doesn't matter if your report is incomplete. What's important is 
it must reach the persons who has the need to know or the end user in time. And kaya nga may Judith, Judith kung minsan mga compliances which we have to act upon. Kung anong maset na Judith, kailangan compliant. Kung ano yung kulang, sa kanilang ilagay na to follow. Diba? Kesa naman yung delayed, kinumpleto mo nga, delayed naman, useless. Wala nang gagamit. Anhin pa ang damo kung patay ng kabayo. So, flexibility. Intelligence activities are based on reason and judgment and not on fixed procedures. Diba? We have the what we call standard operating procedure that if a certain incident happen, we have this set of actions to be followed. However, in every rule, there is an exemption. So, in the field of intelligence, we must be flexible because uh, not everything works as planned. Hindi lahat ng plano natin ay natutupad. Meron at meron mababago dyan. So, we have to be flexible as the situation dictates. So, security. Constant security measures must be undertaken to deny unauthorized personnel information about operations, sources of information, and the intelligence product. Imagination, foresight, and resourcefulness. So, kung wala tayong other resources, we have to be resourceful. We have to work on what we have to attain our mission. So, an integral part of the military operations. Intelligence activities are integral parts of the operations of all units, both for combat or service. So, when we say service, these are office works. When we say combat, these are field works. Okay? And continuity. The basic principle of intelligence operation is that intelligence activities follow a simple continuous cycle. Now, what we call intelligence cycle. We will be discussing that later. So, intelligence as a cycle. All intelligence activities generally follow a four-phase cycle oriented to the commander's mission. So, all of these cycles are directed towards the attainment of the commander's mission. So, uses of intelligence, it assists the combat commander in the accomplishment of his mission by providing information about the weather, enemy, people, and terrain. So, we call it combat intelligence. It provides the environmental background for the formulation of military strategy, force structure, national security, and defense policy. We call this national intelligence. And it assists in the development of contingency plans or emergency plans and concepts by providing the information regarding the current and potential threats posed by any possible enemy. So the possible courses of action of an enemy country. So you, uh, intelligence assists in the setting up of useful and realistic training programs by providing vital information about a potential adversary's military strategy. Just like if you are an athlete, uh, sino mga boxingero, uh, boxingero dito? Mga taekwondo players, mga martial artists. Di ba? Before you compete, before you face square with your enemy, one of the strategy is to watch. Di ba? Papanoorin natin yung mga previous fights ng kalaban natin. Di ba? Ulit-ulitin pa nga natin panoorin yan para makapag-strategize tayo on how to counter his attack and do our offensives. Diba? So, that's part of it. Tactics, force capabilities, and limitations. Concept of operation for employment of weapons, systems, and his military doctrine. So, intelligence also gives warning on enemy plans so as to avoid surprise attacks on our forces and installations. So, we should also have an intelligence officer to monitor the movements of our enemy. Para hindi tayo masupresa. Na, oh, na-ambush na pala tayo. Nire-raid na pala tayo. 
ba? So at least bago bago gumawa, bago gumalaw ang kalaban, eh alam na natin. So the principal areas of interest ni in intelligence, military. So military intelligence, it is more on offensive and defensive tactics, more on war plans, strategic concepts and tactical principles, organizations, installations, industrial lists. So when we say industrial list, umuu pa rin tayo ng mga logistics natin, mga facilities. Armed forces, command structure, command personnel, material, tactics, and moral. Yan. So dapat morally afflicted din ang mga personnel. Pag masayang personnel, maganda ang resulta ng operasyon. Pag malungkot personnel, baka malungkot din ang maging ending ng operation. Diba? So, dapat keep the personnel high moral. So, military intelligence. This is not the best example of military intelligence we have seen. So, the logo of the NICA, our National Intelligence Coordinating Agency. NICA. They consolidate intelligence from all of the government agencies in the entire Philippines and do formulate national policy and national security. So, NICA. What is the counterpart of NICA in Israel? Guys. Oh. Where are you guys? Sir, nandito pa ba sir? Oo oh, nga. Ano nga sagot nyo? What is the counterpart of NICA in the country Israel? Ano ang counterpart ng NICA sa Israel? Oh, I showed that a while back. Di ba? Mossad. Di ba? Sabi ko pa, Mossad. How about in Russia? We haven't discussed those but it was flashed in the screen a while back. You should be a keen observer. KGB, di ba? Ano yung KGB? Medyo mahirap i-pronounce. But in English, uh, Commission on National Intelligence. Di ba? Ah, no, no. Israel. Musad. Eh, tama. Israel. Musad. So, moving on. We have here the principal areas of interest in intelligence. So, in general, we are talking about topographical and hydrographical characteristics, historical backgrounds. So, ano ba yung mga nangyari dito sa Pilipinas? Ba bago siya naging Pilipinas, sino ba yung mga sumakot dito? Ano ang klase ng mga terrain dito? Mga geographic area? Ano ang klase ang atmosphere natin dito? Ang area. Diba? And when we say diplomatic, the foreign policies, alliances, and diplomatic establishment. So, ano ba yung saan ba tayo may MOA with other country? So, we are, a part, we are a member of the UN. We are also a proud member of the Interpol. Aside from that, we are also a member of the ASEAN. Yan. So, yan yung mga membership ng Pilipinas. Na pagka isang bansa umatake sa Pilipinas, so pwede tayong humingi ng tulong from those organizations. Yan. So, foreign service personnel, technique of conducting foreign relations. So, that's your diplomatic establishment of connection to foreign countries. So, when you say political, it deals with the ideology, beliefs, traditions, institutions, personalities, area of friction. So, we ha I have a question. Give me 
two main causes of terrorism class give me two main causes of terrorism bakit tayo mayroong terrorism what are the con most contributory factors or causes hmm Reyes, Ivan, Sear, what's your answer? Sir, no. Personal gain po, gaya po ng sa pera po. Walang pera, kaya sumasanib sa terrorist? Sir, different ideologies po. Ideologies is one, di ba? So, that is one. Ideology, when we say ideology, yung paniniwala. And following ideology kasi paniniwa pag kahit yung paniniwala mo hahanap ka ng kalinya kalinya mo ng paniniwala di ba and here will now be formulated political dynasty di ba so uh, political alignment i mean so may mabubuo ng political alignment ngayon kung sino ang kapareho mo ng ng paniniwala eh yun ang susuportahan mo Di ba? Eh kung ang ang head natin ay ang head ng organization na yun ay gustong i-overthrow ang government. Gusto niyong palitan. Di ba? It leads to terrorism. Aside from that, religion is one. Di ba? Religion. So why? Why is religion a factor to terrorism? Considering the ISIS. Di ba? So, these Muslims have the belief that uh, ang paniniwala niya, pareho lang, pareho lang din naman sa paniniwala natin ng mga Christians, di ba? So, ano ba meron sa ating belief? We should be united for us to attain world peace, di ba? So, how can we be united? Dapat isang Diyos natin, isang isa tayo, maging isa tayong tao. Isang paniniwala natin, di ba? So, ang sabi naman ng Muslim brothers, extreme Muslim brothers, we should be one. We should be united. But the problem is on their means. Ano ba yung means nila? Ano ba yung marisa means nila? Sabi nila, let's invite them by force to be Muslims. Dapat isang religion natin, Muslim lahat. And what will we do to those persons who doesn't want to convert into into Islam. Yun ang may problema. We kill them. O, di ba? <laughs> so, isa lang. Magiging universally peace ang mundo kung Muslim lahat daw ng tao. So, we also have here communications and transportation. It was tackled a while back. The importance of communication and transportation that once it was sabotaged by the enemy, we cannot transmit communications. So, social, when you say social, it refers to the uh, attachment of presidents within a local community, di ba? So, what are their beliefs? How do they socialize? What are their cultures and traditions? Di ba? How do they think? What's their municipal ordinance, city ordinance, barangay uh, law? What's their law? So when we say economic, it is more on the gains of the locality. So what are our primary source of living? Ano bang kinabubuhay ng, ng Laguna? Ano ang number one product ng Laguna? Because here in the Cordillera, we have vegetables. Farmers mostly ang tao kasi dito. And rice, palay. Diba? Agricultural. Aside from agricultural, mining. Meron ding mining dito. How about you there in Laguna? Business. Yan. So, financial, commercial, agricultural, industrial are all part of economic. So, when you say financial, it pertains 
to monetary policies, currency structure, transactions, institutions, and personalities na businessmen. When we say commercial, trade policies, markets, trading methods, price policies, and personalities. Ah, ito yung commercial, ito yung businessman. Kala. And industrial, structure of capacity, manufacturing plants and process, law material, energy rotations, labor relations, and related personalities. Diba? So when you say industrial, anything that produces a product. We also have here mining, mineral resources, production method, and its output. So agriculture. Policies on agriculture, crop structure, cultivation method, mechanization, financing, specific characteristics of rural population. So when we say rural population, we are talking about the population in the provinces. When we say urban population, we are referring to the population in the cities. Now I ask you, ladies and gentlemen, in what type of population do we have more number of crime, rural or urban? Hmm, you are not listening. Oh, yes. We have more crime rate in urban places. So, what are the possible causes to this? It's because we have mixture of cultures and tradition. Unlike in rural places, they have one and the same belief. Diba? Magkakakilala lahat sila. Pagka may isang taong gumawa ng krimen, mapapaya sa buong locality. Unlike here in the city, hindi tayo magkakakilala. Kapit bahay mo na, hindi mo pakakilala. So, there are those tendencies. Na even them, if they need, they may victimize neighbors. Pag nagipit, they may victimize Neighbors, pwede rin yan. So, so, we have here again the three kinds of police intelligence. So, we were done, ladies and gentlemen, with military intelligence a while back. So, now we will be discussing police intelligence. So, what is police intelligence? Sabi nyo kanina, may sabi natin kanina. It is the intelligence intended for the gathering of information pertaining to criminal persons, crime groups, di ba? Organized crime groups. Yan. So now, one of the broad category of police intelligence is the strategic intelligence. Just like your military intelligence, pareho lang sila. Meron silang strategic intelligence pareho. So it does not have immediate operational value, but rather long range that may become relevant to future police Operation. So, just like strategic operation, it is long range in nature. Diba? Hindi siya kailangan gamitin kaagad. Otherwise, kung kailangan gamitin kaagad, we call it combat or tactical intelligence. So, in the military, the counterpart of this line intelligence is the combat intelligence. Diba? But here in the police parlance, we call it line intelligence. It is the kind of intelligence required by the commander to provide for planning and conduct tactical and administrative operation in counterinsurgency. Okay? So when we say counterinsurgency, it is addressed to fighting the new people army, the insurgents or the rebels. Yan. And also to include the criminals. Okay? So, line intelligence are these intelligence required for the formulation planning of operations encountering insurgency and criminality. So, that is our line intelligence. The, but its counterpart in the military intelligence is the combat intelligence. So, next to line intelligence, ah, similar with the military intelligence, before I forget, uh, similar with the military intelligence, it also has the same components. So, the threat, the people, weather, enemy, and terrain as well. So, pareho lang. 
used in counterinsurgency and anti-criminal operations. So you say people, you know people already. Same is true with weather. Will it be cloudy, rainy? How about the temperature? When you see an enemy, what are their strengths? How many are they? What are their weapons? Where are they located or disposition? What's their tactical capability? What are their trainings? Do they have underground bases? And are they vulnerable from attack or we are the ones vulnerable from their attack? So in terms of terrain, relief and drainage system. So vegetation, surface material, and man-made features. So what are these man-made features under terrain? We can include here again pathways, di ba? Mga daanan na gawang tao. So there are military aspects of terrain which includes cover and concealment obstacle, critical key terrain features, observation and fields of fire, and avenues of approach. That's the false. So last but not the least, same is true with military intelligence. Police intelligence also have their counterintelligence, okay? So mayroon parehong counterintelligence, both military and police intelligence. So counterintelligence in the police parlance is a kind of intelligence which covers the activity devoted in destroying the effectiveness of the hostile foreign countries and to the protection of information against espionage, subversion, and sabotage. So, uh, counterintelligence is devoted to destroy the effectiveness of our hostile foreign countries and, aside from that, to protect our vital information from being stolen by the spy. So, that's your counterintelligence. Intelligence. Hence, the three activities of counterintelligence are as follows. So, protection of information against espionage, protection of personnel against subversion, and protection of installation and material against sabotage. So, that's the job function of counterintelligence. If you can recall later, uh, ladies and gentlemen, during the reign of President Duterte, he formulated the what we call uh, CITF, di ba? which means Counterintelligence Task Force. Yan, bakit? Kasi sabi ni President Duterte, I declare war on drugs. Tapos tanong ng community, who would declare, uh, who would uh, implement your war on drugs, Mr. President? Don't worry, I have my PNP. Diba? Sabi na naman ng magaling na community. Oh, the PNPs and the PDAs are the ones selling drugs. Diba? Illegal drugs. Sila rin, sila sila rin ang gumagawa ng krimen. Sabi ulit ni President Duterte, Don't worry, I have an intervention to that. So thereby, CITF was formulated. Counterintelligence Task Force. Uh, before, it was directly under the office of the chief PNP. Yan. So, directly under the office of the chief PNP. Yan. So, yung director ng IMEG ay nagre-report directly kay chief PNP. However, with the passing of time, there had been changes in the PNP organization. And uh, one of the changes is the name CITF. The CITF, Counterintelligence Task Force, was renamed to IMEG. I-M-E-G. Hi, Meg. Can you hear me, class? Class. Sir, yes, sir. Ah, sabi kasi dito, mahina daw yung internet ko. Buti lang, naririnig nyo pa. So, what does I Meg means? Integrity Monitoring Enforcement Group. Yan. Okay, so, pinalitan ng pangalan. Now, question. Bakit ba pinalitan ng pangalan ang, ang ano, counterintelligence task force? Why? Because the main reason is 
there is a misnomer. When we say misnomer, maling pangalan. Di ba? Why? Because its function is to uh, apprehend officers, PNP officers, who are doing illegal acts. Mga cotton cups na bibenta ng droga, di ba? So, yun yung function niya. Now, was that CITF, form, was that formulated CITF acting on that purpose na huliin yung mga staliwas na police? Tama, di ba? Tama. However, the next question is, uh, is the name of the unit aligned with its function? Tama ba yung pangalan ng unit? Naka-align ba sa function niya? Ang function niya, nanguhuli siya ng mga taliwas na police. Mga potong cops, mga nagbibenta ng droga. Pero ang pangalan niya, Counter Intelligence Task Force. Tama ba yung pangalan? Class, sagutin nyo. Tama ba yung pangalan? Hmm. Mr. Uh, Miss Bangay, tama ba yung pangalan ng Counter Intelligence Task Force? Jasper Dorado, tama ba yung pangalan na Counter Intelligence Task Force? Ang pangalan niya, Counter Intelligence Task Force, ang trabaho niya, nang huhuli ng taliwas na pulis. Hala, di ba nag-usap na tayo kanina? The meaning of counterintelligence is what? Oh, huwag niyo naman sayangin yung laway ko. Guys, dapat may matutunan kayo. What does it mean when we say counterintelligence? Hi. How about Ms. Balmes? Calago, Camille, Michaves, Kilapio. If you don't have uh, an answer, you will all be marked absent. <laughs> Computer at laptop nyo lang nakalagin. Wala kayo. Well, you open cam class so I could see your faces. Ba talagang wala talaga kayo. Come on, open cam. Okay. O, oh, tama ba yung pangalan ng CITF? Mali, di ba? Why? O, oh, okay na, Miss Bangay. When we say counterintelligence, its purpose should be preventing, protecting our vital information from spy. Yun dapat ang trabaho niya. Pero CITF, counterintelligence task force, yung pangalan, tapos ang ginagawa niya, nangungunit siya ng taliwas na police, mali. The name is disaligned. Diba? Thereby causing the uh, renaming of the unit. Ginawang IMEG, Integrity Monitoring Enforcement Group. Now, when we say integrity monitoring, monitor nila yung integridad ng mga personnel kung aligned ba with the mission of the PNP. Diba? So, is IMEG, is the name IMEG now aligned with the function of the unit? Hmm. Trisha, why are you all walking? What are you doing? Ah. What are you doing? Huh? Oh, show me your notes. Show me your notes. So, where are your notebook? Okay. Noted, Lizel, De Los Reyes, Briones, De Chavez. Ah, the others. Walang notebook, ah. Sige. Okay. So, let's resume. Uh, it's already, by the way, it's already 6 p.m. pa lang. Baka naman kasi may gusto kayong sabihin. Do you have a statement or request, class, before we continue? Sir, verify yes, lang po namin kung hagang anong oras po yung review po, sir. Ah, yun nga eh. Uh, we started late. That's why I am requesting for an extension. Now, if you have a counter offer, uh, let's see how we can meet. Any counter offer from the class? 
because we started anong oras tayo nag-umpisa? Was that was that 3 o'clock? Yes, po sir. Oh, so 3. We have already consumed 2 hours. We still have remaining 2 hours. So probably we'll be dismissed if uh, we continue this discussion straight, we should be finished by 7 p.m. But if you wish to have a break for an hour and resume at at uh, after an hour, then we can extend for another hour. What do you? What does the class propose, suggest, or recommend? Come on, don't be shy. We have one and the same objective here. So, what's the decision of the class? Are you all at home? Nasa ba? Sir, nasa masid po kasi po yung iba sa gawa na magpa-practice po sana ng pasa masid po. Kasi akala po namin ihagang 5 lang po yung review po. Ah, okay. So, pasa masid. Where are you going? When are you going to use the pasa masid? Then you propose. Pasa masid na sa event drills po, sir, para po sa opening ng cream days po. Kailan ang cream days? Sa... 11 to 13 po. 11 to 13. Ng oras oh, so you have one week to practice. Is that is that authorized or scheduled by the department? Naka-schedule ba sa department? Sir, ang schedule po sana nun ay ngayon po, Saturday and Sunday po talaga, sir. 5 p.m. Um, 5 p.m. 5 p.m. Hindi po sir, bali kanina pa po dapat yung umaga po sir, hagang 5pm po dapat. Ay nag-request lang po kami na kung pwede po yung intern po ay humabol na lang po kami ng 5 po. Tapos ay hagang gabi na lang po para po makapag-practice po kasi po may review po kami na naka-schedule po. Hmm. Okay, so so with that, ladies and gentlemen, what do you propose? Sige na, anong offer nyo? Anong gusto nyo gawin natin? What does the majority want? Can we resume or can we set aside this review and have it rescheduled? Pwede naman natin rescheduled. Just like we did with uh, Sir Navarro, di ba? Yes po, sir. Hmm. So, what do you propose? If in case you would like to reschedule, when do you want to reschedule? Because tomorrow we will be having full day lecture again from 8 to 5. Hmm. Do you have a class representative to decide on your behalf? Ako po, sir. Uh, Valencia? You're the class representative? Yes, yes po, sir. Okay, so what's the decision of the class? Sir, may practice din po kasi kami bukas po kung hagang next week po. Kung okay lang po ay after cream days po yung review po. Kung okay lang po kay din din po. Sir. Ay nako. Hindi hindi pala pwede because it's the din who was uh, who made the schedule, hindi ako. I just followed the instruction from the din. Ilan bang ba intern, ilan bang ba affected? Or I have a counter offer. We can have this recorded and uh, we can upload a copy of this of the record of this discussion which you can let later browse so for the rest of the members who doesn't have a who are not participant of that practice we can still resume okay that, lang po yun sir gawa ng ang hindi uh, po kasali na intern sa practice po ay 13 lang po sir tas the rest po kasali na po kami lahat ha 13 lang ang hindi kasama okay, yes okay po lang. sir okay lang okay lang at least the, the the thing is, we will be finishing on time. So, okay lang. It's your responsibility to take notes from where you stop. Okay? Because later on, the dean may require to check your notes. But it's the standard of the dean. Requirement niya kasi yan, dapat mayroon kayong notebook. And at the end of the sem, dapat mayroon kayong mga nasulat. Okay, so so I think we are we are all set. Do we have an agreement that we can still resume the thirteen of us or fourteen? 
and the rest of the interns will continue their plant activity, the practice. Sir, paano po kaya yung bukas po, sir? Recording din po, sir, yung sa amin po. Ang problema, kailangan talagang ipagpatuloy namin. I-record na lang namin, then I will, we will be sending the recorded link na lang to you. So, bahala na kayong magkanya-kanyang habol, magkanyang uh, makinig on your, on your most vacant time. Apo, sir. Copy po, sir. Okay. Okay, so, sir, verify po lang po yung pangbukas po na review po namin. Jojoin pa po ba kami sa Zoom po? Or yung recorded na lang din po, sir? If you can join, it's better. But if you really can't, because you prioritize your practice over the review, kung sa tingin nyo mas importante yung practice nyo kaysa sa review, eh, depende. We, hindi kasi tayo pare-pareho ng priority. But for me, my priority is to prepare you for the board exam especially so that uh, you have a we have a participant that are about to be scheduled for the board exam diba meron tayong meron kayong senior na magtitik ng board sila ba yung 13 na sinasabi nyo Ah, class representative, ganito na lang. Uh, I'm not quite sure if the dean would be allowing that. Kung na-try nyo na ba noon at pumayag siya. But uh, as far as I am concerned, pagka nagbato siya ng schedule, dapat masunod. It's my responsibility to follow kasi the schedule as he uh, declared. So, try nyo na lang kausapin si Dean. Tapos kung sakaling pagpayag siya, info, he will be informing me. Pero kung sakaling wala siyang update, we will be resuming as scheduled. Okay? So, not to waste much of our time, ladies and gentlemen. I think we have uh, agreed already. So, the interns may now be excused. And uh, let's see how many will be left. Oh, sige na, thank sige you na. po, sir. Yes. Thank you po, sir. Okay na, okay na. No need to uh, say your thank. Thank you. So, you are excused. You may leave. Uh, sige yes. na, sige na. So, uh, bibilangin ko lang kung ilan na may iwan. Okay, so we are down to 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14 talaga. So, may 1 yung 13. Okay, so the rest of the participants, would you wish to have an overtime? Or would you wish to have a, a, an early dinner break and continue later? Do we have a class representative for the for the remaining 13? Who can represent the class? Are you all in your homes? Nasa kanya-kanyang mga bahay ba kayo? Yes, sir. How about uh, yes, po. the Chavez, Perez, Umali, Bundalian? Nasa yes, bahay ka? Ah, okay. Yes, po, sir. So, if that's the case that you are already at home, pwede tayong mag-resume. Maliba na lang kung magre-request na kayo ng dinner. So, what time do you wish your dinner? Dinner break. Anong oras niyo gusto yung dinner break? Or tapusin na lang hanggang 7 p.m.? Tapusin na lang. Siguro. Okay, sige. Tapusin na lang hanggang 7 p.m. Kasi pati ako, gusto ko rin tapusin hanggang 7 p.m. So, without so much ado, ladies and gentlemen, allow me again to share my screen and let's proceed. Can you see my screen pala? The PowerPoint presentation? Nakikita nyo ba? Hindi pa po. Hindi pa? So, what happened? Ba't ganyan? 
Wait lang ha. How about now? Can you see my presentation? Opo, kita na po. Okay. Okay. So, where was I a while back? So, we are under counterintelligence under police parlance or police intelligence. Okay? So, counterintelligence again includes anti-espionage, anti-subversion, and anti Sabotage. So when we say espionage, it refers to spies stealing vital information. When we say subversion, it refers to offenses, offense, uh, offensive against government troops and high-ranking officials. And when we say sabotage, the destruction of vital installation of or within the Philippines. So. Those are the subjects of counterintelligence to prevent espionage, subversion, and sabotage being conducted by the, by the insurgents to include the NPAs and other criminal groups. So let's proceed. So, just like the military intelligence, we also have passive and active measures. Pareho lang sila, parehong pareho lang. What differs is the, is the objective. So, the objective of the Philippine National Police is internal security, while the objective of the Philippine Army, military intelligence, is external security. So, under passive measures, these are those measures which seek to conceal information from the enemy. Diba? So, pareho lang din. Through secrecy discipline, through security of, of uh, information, security classification of documents or information, through movement control, and camouflage. Pareho lang, diba? Passive measures. And when we say active measures, these are, this includes anti-sabotage operation, anti count anti-espionage operation or counter-espionage operations and counter-sabotage uh, counter-subversion operation we have the term pilferage but it is more applicable in terms of industrial security management so what is pilferage magkakasama kasi itong mga to si sabotage, pilferage, espionage diba? so when we say pilferage Pilferage is the act of stealing from your own workplace. Diba? So, yun ang pil pilferage. Nagnanakaw ka from your own workplace. So, it is applicable in industrial management, industrial security management, but not in police and military intelligence. Yan. So, yan ang pilferage. So, pilferage is a type of theft. It is under theft. However, uh, trust may be included your boss may have trusted you. They have entrusted to you some property which you have taken advantage of. So, that makes it qualified theft. Diba? So, naging qualified theft ang, pwedeng qualified theft ang pilferage or pwedeng theft din depending on the specific scenario. So, naulit lang to. Diba? Strategic intelligence, line intelligence. So, ito ang naiba. Ah, hindi. Nasabi na natin ito. When we say national intelligence, it involves the consolidation of all intelligence, of all the intelligence agencies and units within the Philippines. Diba? So, this is what the NICA is doing. Consolidating all the intelligence nationwide. It is the integrated product or consolidation of all the intelligence Developed by all the government branches. So, intelligence from the ISAFP, intelligence from the Philippine Army, intelligence from the PNP, intelligence from the uh, LGU, from the NBI, and so on and so forth, will be consolidated as one. By whom? 
by the NICA. And we call it now the end product national intelligence to address national security and national policy. So national intelligence is used to coordinate all activities of the government in developing and executing integrated and national policies and plans. So counterintelligence again means protection of vital information. Okay? So the phase of intelligence covering the activity devoted in destroying the effectiveness of the hostile foreign activities. So hostile foreign activities, yung tridor na foreign countries. Okay? And to the protection of vital information against espionage, subversion, and sabotage. So let's discuss undercover work. So what is an undercover work? So he's on undercover. When we say undercover, he's a member of the of the police, but he infiltrated the target criminal group. Diba? So, for a side of the criminal group, they see this undercover agent as their colleague or co-employee. However, unknowingly, these undercover agents are gathering information pertaining their agency or their group and reporting it to the headquarters of the National Police. So, undercover work is an investigative process. Okay? So, take note, ladies and gentlemen, ah, its purpose is investigation to gather more pieces of evidence and information and later on to file appropriate criminal charges against these persons, the member of that organized crime group. So, it is an investigative process in which disguises and pretext cover. So, when we say cover, it is uh, referring to the cover story. Nagpanggap yung police na kunwari businessman. Diba? So, that's the pretext cover or cover story. And deception. So, talagang kailangan niyang gumamit ng deception para hindi siya pagdudaan na police siya. So, these are used to gain the confidence of criminal suspects for the purpose of determining the nature and extent of any criminal activities that may be contemplating or perpetuating. Oh, this naman. Yeah, so, that's the, the undercover word. So, let's try to answer this question. It is the product resulting from the collection, evaluation, analysis, and interpretation of all available information which concern one or more aspect of criminal activity and which is immediately or potentially significant to police planning. What's your answer? Class. Data. The product resulting from the collection. Diba? The definition, the simplest definition of intelligence is a processed information, diba? So, intelligence is a processed information. Now, how do we define uh, intelligence in a longer meaning? It involves the collection, the gathering of information, the interpretation, evaluation, analysis. Diba? And the end result of all those process is called intelligence or the product itself. Diba? So, let's analyze the question. It is the product resulting from the collection, evaluation, analysis, and interpretation of all available information which concerns one or more aspects of criminal activity. So, pwedeng one or two aspects or more aspects of criminal activity and which is immediately or potentially significant to police planning. So, pwede nating magamit kaagad in our police operation or pwedeng hindi pa natin gagamitin pero napaka-importante sa ating pagpaplano. So, we call it 
end product. So, when you say product, it is the result. We call it intelligence, di ba? Mali? Mali ako? Tama, intelligence. Next question. Intelligence on blank makes heavy use of geographic information because law enforcement officials must know exact locations to interdict the flow of drugs. What's the answer? Is it intelligence on logistics, intelligence on human cargo trafficking, intelligence on narcotic trafficking, or intelligence on economic resources? May I hear the answer of Ms. Komia, my uh, former student? Letter D po. Letter D. So, let's try to analyze your answer. Uh, mali. Si po pala, sir. Ha? Huh? Bravo. Si po. Delta. Analyze this class. Charlie po. Charlie. So what's your keyword in arriving? Narcotic, sir. So what was the keyword from the question? The, ano po, drugs. Oh, yun, di ba? So that's how you use keyword technique. Di ba? So intelligence on narcotics trafficking makes heavy use of geographic information because law enforcement officials must know the exact locations to interdict the flow of drugs. And drugs is referring to narcotics. Okay? So, nice analyzation there. Next question. It is defined as evaluative and interpreted information concerning organized crime and other major police problems. What do we call that? Is that military intelligence, military information, police intelligence, or police investigation? Why don't you use the elimination technique? Is there a choice we can eliminate? Mayroon ba tayo pwedeng ma-eliminate dyan, Mr. Dorado, Jasper? How about? Yes po. Oh, anong pwede nating eliminate? Anong choice? Yung pong military kasi po nakalagay po dyan yung other major okay. police of so problems po. Yes, thank you. So let's eliminate military. Alpha and Bravo. Now, we are down to two choices. How should you select the correct answer from these uh, two remaining choices? What is the right proper term to use here? Intelligence or investigation? Intelligence person. Why? Why intelligence? Kasi po, sir, based on the ano po, is yung ginagather, pininterpret po dito yung information na nakuha dun sa okay. And besides, there is na, there's no crime committed yet. So, wala pa lang. Pagka may na-commit kasing crime, doon papasok ang term na investigation. Pero pagka wala pang crime, intelligence ang broad na term na ginagamit. So, let's try Charlie. Ayan. So, we got it right. Next question. A form of intelligence which concerns with the various types of confidential information that filter into the possession of the police and the techniques employed in developing these lines of information. What do we call that? So, what's the answer? Is there a choice we can eliminate? May ba tayong eliminate na pwede? Hmm. 
Hmm. So what's the answer of the class? In guess. So when we say undercover, we assign a personnel to apply as a member of that crime group, criminal group, di ba? So yun ang undercover. When we say counterintelligence, it is more on the protection of our vital information against sabotage, espionage, and subversion, di ba? Again, protection of information against spy. When we say departmental intelligence, the collection of intelligence for the use of our agency. And when we say strategic intelligence, it is for long-term long intelligence. It can be used 5 to 10 years from now. So what's your answer? So, bakit nabawasan kayo? 13 kayo kanina naging 8. Reza, do you think the answer is correct? Oops. Do you think the answer is correct? We should learn how to analyze. So it is a form of intelligence which concerns with the various types of confidential information. So marami tayong confidential information. Diba? So itatago natin yung pagkakakilanlan natin. Itatago natin yung tunay na pagkatao natin, gagawa tayo ng peke na identity natin. Tapos kukuha tayo ng information. And we develop these techniques in continuing such type of operation. So, the answer here is the best answer here, ladies and gentlemen, is tama talaga, undercover intelligence. It deals with various types of confidential information. So, yun ang isang hanapin nyo, yung mga keyword technique. When we say strategic intelligence, the keyword there is for long-term planning. Di ba? May, wala naman siyang long-term planning dun sa question. Same is true with departmental intelligence to be used by the PNP. Hindi naman siya naka-specify sa PNP lang. Same is true with counterintelligence. Walang nasabi regarding the counter-subversion, counter-espionage, and counter-sabotage. But undercover intelligence has, di ba? So, the various types of confidential information. So, kasama na rin dito yung mga makukuha nating information from the target organized crime group. So, who are their bosses? Sino ba ang boss? Who are their supplies? How powerful is the organized crime group? What are their weapons? Diba? Ilan ang mga armor vehicle nila? Do they have jet? Do they have airplane? Do they have ships? Diba? So, it, comp it comprises of a various intelligence. Next question. Which should a police administrator uh, which a police administrator which a police administrator must rely as one of the most indispensable tools of management? It is derived from the from organized information available in the police records in a division which is concerned with the nature, size, and distribution of the police problems of crime, vice, and traffic. Now, what intelligence is this? Is this strategic, counter, departmental, or undercover? So, no answer from the class? C po, sir. Departmental. Uh, depart. Mental. So, let's try your answer. Departmental intelligence. Okay? So, vice traffic and crime is for use of PNP. Department. Or agency. And aside from that, you can combine 
these two techniques, pwedeng keyword technique and at the same time, elimination technique. At kung kinulang pa, pwede nyo pang dagdagan pa ng isa pang technique. If uh, broad to specific or specific to broad technique is applicable, then you can use that. However, in this uh, scenario, parang hindi natin magagamit yun. What we can use here is the keyword technique and elimination technique. So, strategic intelligence. Walang sinabi yung question about that. Same is true with counterintelligence and same is true with undercover intelligence. So, kahit na hindi nyo kunwari alam yung departmental intelligence, yun lang ang problema. Pwede nyo eliminate nyo yung ma-eliminate nyo rin yung departmental intelligence kung hindi nyo talaga alam. But anyways, these three, the strategic, counter, and undercover intelligence are far from what is being asked for. Next, an intelligence which is primarily long-range, o yan na, in nature, with, the, with little or no immediate practical value. So in short, hindi natin siya kailangan immediately. Hindi pa natin siya magagamit. Pero, makakatulong pa rin. Now, what type of intelligence is that? Alpha. Alpha, Alpha. Alpha. no doubt. O, di ba? So, keyword technique is strategic intelligence agad yan. Next. So, the type of intelligence activity that deals with the defending of the organization against its criminal enemies. What do we call that? What intelligence is that? Military po. Ah, military intelligence. Who are the enemy? Counterintelligence? Are we protecting our vital information? Or personnel? Or vital facilities? Ah, tama. Defending of the organization against... Hindi eh, kulang eh. Mali eh. Against its criminal enemies. So the enemy is the criminal. Not insurgents, not external threats. So, ano ang sagot dapat dito? Strategic intelligence is uh, napakalayo, di ba? We can eliminate this. Now, among the choices... Which intelligence is dealing with the protection of the organization, the Philippine organization, uh, the Philippine National Police, from criminal enemies? Or hindi lang siya PNP. Pwede pa itong gamitin sa, ano, sa military. The problem is, uh, it is specified criminal enemies, sabi niya. So what should be your answer? What's the final answer of the class? Early po akin, sir. Charlie, isn't this a police intelligence? Hindi ba yung police intelligence? Ah, wait, wait. 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 The type of intelligence activity that deals with the defending of the organization against criminal enemies. May mali, di ba? Defending of Defending of vital installation Defending of high-ranking officials And defending of vital information Yun dapat ang counterintelligence Pero defending of uh, organization, the PNP organization Against criminal enemies So pagka-criminal ang pinag-uusapan Ang kalaban ng criminal, police, di ba? So this should be Delta None of this, ano dapat to, delta dapat to. Uh, correct this, ladies and gentlemen. Ha? The answer here should be police intelligence. Why? Kasi kalaban ng, sinong kalaban ng criminal? It's the police. Okay? And it's the police who defend the organization against criminal enemies. So delta dapat yan. None of this. So ano ba dapat ang sagot? Police intelligence. Next question. It is the evaluated and interpreted information concerning an actual or possible enemy or threat of operations, including weather, terrain, together with the conclusion drawn therefrom. So, anong kulang dito? Enemy, people, weather, and terrain. 
So what type of intelligence is this? Line intelligence, is strategic. Alpha. Alpha? Now, let's try to analyze. It is the evaluated and interpreted information concerning an actual or possible enemy. So there's an enemy or threat of operations, including weather and terrain. Together with the conclusion drawn from the analysis or interpretation on the weather and terrain. So, what do we call this? Your answer is? It cannot be covert operation. Why? Because it is, it is looking for a product. So, it should be ending with the word intelligence. It cannot be strategic intelligence likewise, di ba? Why? Because in strategic intelligence, uh, it does not necessarily be requiring an immediate action. Ano ba kasi mga nagre-require ng mga immediate action? Mostly enemies. Pagka may enemy dyan, kailangan niya ng immediate action. Diba? So walang combat intelligence, military intelligence, Pero the counterpart of combat intelligence is line intelligence. Now, if there is a clue here in the question that it can be qualified in the police parlance, then we can choose alpha. Okay, so it is the evaluated and interpreted information. So intelligence na yan. It is the intelligence. Concerning an actual or possible enemy or threat of operations, including weather and terrain. So, ano yung sagot mo kanina? Parang alpha talaga to. So, what's your answer, while back? What's the answer of the class, while back? Alpha po, sir. Alpha yung sagot mo? Ayun. So, you got it right. Congratulations. Next. The type of intelligence that is immediate in nature. So, kailangan ka agad and necessary for more effective police planning. At least you're learning how to analyze. That's good. So what's your answer? It needs an immediate action. So which among the choices needs an immediate action? In your plans, we call it tactical plans, di ba? It needs, it requires an immediate action. However, in intelligence, we don't have yet tactical intelligence. So, ano ang medyo mas malapit sa tactical intelligence? Police intelligence. Are you sure it's police intelligence? Why don't you use the broad to specific and specific to broad technique? Aside from the keyword technique. Is the question seeking for a broader term or more specific term? I... Police intelligence and military intelligence can, can be too broad, di ba? O, sabi natin, pagka nag, nangangailangan tayo ng immediate response, we call it tactical. Wala nga lang tactical. So, ang pinakamalapit, line of combat intelligence. Line intelligence, pagka sa police yan. But if in the PNP, we call it combat intelligence, di ba? Kailangan niya kagad ng action. So, pagkakuha natin ng information ngayon, Nasaan yung kalaban? Nandun. O pagka, pagka alaman natin na nandun yung kalaban, patatagalin pa ba natin? Hindi na. Di ba? A-action na nagad natin. So we call that, unlike your strategic plan, nasaan yung, uh, nasaan kaya yung kalaban? Nandun. May possibility kayang dumami sila? Oo. O sige, paramihin muna natin. Di ba? So long term. <laughs> Di ba? So, what's your answer now? I just hope I had influenced you. <laughs> what's the answer of the class? May I, uh, may I hear the voice of, parang hindi ko pa narinig yung bosses ni, uh, sino ko hindi ko narinig to? Reza Kalago. Sir, nakasagot na po ako kanina. Ah. Sir, uh, How about Joe Marie? Briones? Sir. Oh, let's try your answer. Oops, I'm not good. Ikaw mali ako ng pindot. 
Is that your answer? Be honest. Yes, ha? sir. Ha? Nexplain ko na nga, di ba? Pagka ang intelligence ay nangangailangan ng immediate action, yan ay it belongs to tactical intelligence. But since we don't have tactical intelligence in our discussion, ang pinakamalapit sa tactical intelligence in police parlance is line intelligence. Pero in the military parlance, we call it combat intelligence. Di ba? Oh. So, wala namang combat intelligence. Anong meron? Line intelligence. Di ba? So, pwede si line intelligence. Hindi naman pwedeng overt operation yan. Di ba? Kasi ang overt operation, hindi open operation na yan. Hindi na yan surveillance operation. Police intelligence and military operation, um, military intelligence are too broad. Di ba? So, uh, eliminate natin dapat yan. Next question. It is the proper economical and most productive use of personnel, resources, and equipment employed and or utilized in planning the collection of information, processing of information, and disseminations of intelligence. What do you call that? Is that cardinal principle of intelligence, assets and liability intelligence, economic intelligence, or income and expenditure intelligence? So we haven't discussed this. But let's try your analyzation. Let's try your analysis. So, economic productivity and uh, utilization of resources. So, personnel, equipment, utilized in planning. So, saan yan pumapasok? The collection of information, processing, the processing of information economic intelligence po. and dissemination of intelligence uh, medyo parang kulang economic intelligence kasi meron siyang term na economical sa taas di ba it cannot be asset and liability kasi puro asset lang yung nasabi dito eh wala siyang masabing liability it is the proper economical and most productive use of personnel, resources, and equipment employed and or utilized in planning. So, the word, planning. The collection of information, processing of information, and dissemination of intelligence. It cannot be delta 2. So, your answer is? Alpha? Yan. So, it is talking about the cardinal principle of intelligence. So, before we deploy intelligence agents, we have to compute our resources. So, ilang tao ba ang kailangan natin? Diba? Ilang tao naman ang available? So, ilan ba yung mga kailangan? Ano ba yung mga kailangan resources? Radyo. Diba? Cellphone na bago. Na may bagong SIM din. Kailangan din ba ng bulletproof vest? No. Kailangan, hindi yun. I-compute din natin yun, yung mga resources na magagamit. So, we call that cardinal principle of intelligence. Pagka kasi economic intelligence, it is more on the gains. Yan, the GDP. Oops, nakam. Yan. So, wala siyang ikana, uh, economical, sabi niya lang doon. Eh. Pero wala, mas, wala na yung ibang kadugtong dapat niya. Next question. Oh, uh, sorry. Baka mali yung sagot. So, this type of intelligence is primarily long-range in nature. Ay, bonus question. What's your answer? Delta po. Long range in nature is strategic intelligence. Next question. How about this one? Its role is to provide law enforcement agencies with criminal intelligence and information nationally about major criminals and serious crimes. Hmm. 
nationally. It provides intelligence nationally about major criminals and serious crimes. What do we call that? Huh? We haven't discussed this, but uh, I just hope you can guess it. Can we eliminate international police organization? Yes, both. Yes, because, because there was no word referring to international alliances, di ba? How about Office of Strategic Services? Can we eliminate this? Yes, po. How about National Criminal Intelligence Service, NCIS? Baka ayan po yung sagot. Ayan po yung sagot. O, tingnan natin. How about Police National Computer? Eliminate yung po, sir. Its role is to provide law enforcement agencies with criminal intelligence. Okay. And information nationally. O yan. So, meron ng word na national. Meron na rin yung word na criminal. At meron na rin yung intelligence. O ba? Ang galing nyo naman mga pula. O yan. Next. Offensive measure taken to respond to terrorist attacks. Offensive measures taken to respond to terrorist attacks. What do we call this type of operation? Charlie po. Charlie po. Charlie po. Counter-terrorism. Oh, ano, from the word alone, counter-terrorism. Pagka naman sinabing insurgents, or the insurgency. Okay, let's try your answer. Mga bonus question. Next question. It refers to the social organization of criminals with its own social classes and norms. What do you call that? Organization of criminals with own social classes and norms. If you call it according to Miss uh, Pangalan mo? Oops, wait. Ah, di, wait lang ah, analyze lang natin. It refers to social organization of criminals with its own social classes and norms. The organized crime group has its own social classes, di ba? So, we have the boss, the underboss, the consigliere, the counselor or consigliere, and the sapo, the army. But the criminal word, Ah. Crime po kasi pala yung nakalagay, sir. Oh, Hindi po oh, organized. Yes. Mali, mali tayo. Yeah, oh, so, tama, yung, tama yung bravo. Tama yung bravo. Social organization of criminals. So, mas malaki. We are, we are supposed to be looking for the broader, broadest term. So, criminal word pala dapat. Tama. Okay. Next question. An organized and relatively stable business which uses violence. Okay. Ah, ito na. It has, it is a business which uses violence and threat against competitors. So, what do you call that? Charlie. 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 How about mafia? Mafia, if I'm not mistaken, sir, is a siyang organization uh, ng mga criminals. Organized crime groups are also known as mafia. Pero mas, uh, mas appropriate yung term na organized crime group. Ano? They are synonyms. Di ba? Mafia. So, the Korean mafia. The Japanese mafia. Di ba? So, means to say, pagka-Japan... Kailan lang po pwedeng magamit yung term na mafia? If uh, it usually involves arms. Pareho nga, no? Mayroon siyang arm. Bakit? Itong arm kasi yung ginagamit sa threat. Violence. So, what do you call the Japanese mafia? 
di ba? So kung Japanese mafia ang tinatanong, anong sagot niyo doon? Yung mga maraming tato, you call them? Ano na nga to? Ano na yung term sa Japanese mafia? Yakuza po? Yun, Yakuza, di ba? Yakuza. Yakuza, di ba? So, these are synonyms. Organized crime group and mafia. But for me, when it, when it involves threat, class, the best answer here should be mafia. Although organized criminals also use threats, Yan. However, uh, the organized crime group is too broad. Okay? Bakit too broad? Kasi meron pa silang, meron silang si boss, meron silang si underboss, meron silang si counselor. Diba? Tapos meron pa silang mga armed groups. Okay? Itong armed groups na ang kailangan natin. Sino ba yung mostly armed groups? Yan lang yung mafia. So, the best answer here should be Delta. Kindly correct this class. So if in, if ever you in, if ever you encounter this type of question again with same choices, the best answer should be mafia. They use threats. The best answer ah, between these two choices, organized crime group or the mafia, mafia. Is that clear? Yes, po, sir. Nakai specific kasi siya eh. violence and threat. Yan. So, trabaho ng mafia yan. Pero kung walang mafia, we ended up from Alpha Bravo Charlie lang na Delta, then you can answer, you can choose organized crime group. Oh, next question. Intelligence on the enemy and the characteristics of operation used in the planning and conduct of tactical operations. Yan. So, what do we call that? What type of intelligence is that? Diyan kasi marami sa TOS nyo eh. Uh, understanding, applying, and analyzing. Ang pinakamarami dito, applying. Yan. So, kailangan i-apply natin yung terms ng intelligence. So, intelligence on the enemy and the characteristics of operation used in the planning and conduct of tactical operations. We are referring to A po, strategic intelligence. Uh, what should be the keyword if we would like to answer strategic intelligence? What keyword should we be looking for? Ano po? Planning, conduct of tactical operation. When we say tactical operations, ladies and gentlemen, please, rema please be reminded that it requires an immediate action. Okay? While your strategic intelligence entails long-range intelligence process. So, what should be your answer? Military po. Combat po. Rap. Did it specify Ay, that? Oh, so what's the answer of Bravo. the majority? Combat po, sir. Combat. combat. Po. Okay, combat is the answer of the majority. Let's check the answer of the majority. And you hit it. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, that ends... No, no. That ends the first part discussion of our intelligence. Let's try to search for the cycle of intelligence before I forget. Kasama pala to sa, ano, sa bagong TOS. The intelligence cycle. So, end ko lang to. For the last remaining 40 minutes. Napin ko lang yung isang file. And, while I'm, while I'm looking, you can have your personal necessities. When, while I'm looking for the file.
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, allow me again to share my screen. Can you see my screen? Nakablock lang po, sir. Nakablock po. Let's try to wait. When a member of the U.S. intelligence Ito palang mahirap sa presentation na masyadong mabigat ang file. Yung maraming animation. It will, kung hindi malaki yung memory ng laptop, magbabag talaga. Okay, so let's resume with the continuation of our discussion on, on intelligence. So we have here the word information. So ladies and gentlemen, information is the source of intelligence. Okay, it is the lifeblood of intelligence. Without information, there can never be intelligence. So, can you see my screen? Yes, course, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. Let's proceed. So, information refers to all evaluated materials of every description, including those derived from the following. So, information in its broadest term. It includes information gathered from observation, Information from reports, from rumors, machismis, from imagery, pictures or videos, and other sources from which intelligence is produced. So we have here the two general classification of sources of information. For open sources, we have 99%. Okay, So 99% of information comes from the open sources. While only one comes from the closed sources. So what are the examples of these closed sources? This involves surveillance related activities. Yan yung magpapakahirap pa tayo. Magre-require tayo ng operations to gather information. Not only operation, ha? a covert operation. So covert operation, secret operation. So, overt intelligence is the gathering of information or documents procured openly without regard as to whether the subject or target becomes knowledgeable of the purpose. So, that is your overt intelligence. Regardless of our subject is knowledgeable of our purpose of asking her or him a question, so long as we are gathering information from him, we call it an overt intelligence so open sources includes information taken from the following so pwedeng enemy activity kuminsan may mga enemy na nag uh, nag-announce ng kanilang mga activities di ba prisoner of war and civilians captured documents from arrested persons as arrested npas arrested insurgents or raided camp of enemies. Yeah. So, meron tayong mga capture na documents. Those could be open sources. Also, map, weather forecast, studies, researches, and report of other agencies. So, those are your open sources. And for covert intelligence, it is referring to the 
secret procurement of information or covert operations which is obtained without the knowledge of the person okay so when we say covert intelligence our subject is unaware that we are gathering information from him okay so that's your covert intelligence or person safeguarding vital intelligence interest okay so we may also be doing a covert or covert intelligence against our target person who secures that vital information which we need so pwedeng yung guardia or private armed group ng mga kriminal so sila rin ang subject natin ng covert intelligence natin so, under covert intelligence, these are our close sources. It includes information that may be taken from the following. Surveillance operation. Okay? So, when you say surveillance, it has sub-classifications. Surveillance of persons, we call it surveillance. Uh, we, call, we call it tailing or case tailing. We call it tailing. Diba? Or shadowing. Surveillance of building, we call it casing. Surveillance of an event, we call it roping. Tale, di ba? So, surveillance. Casing and elicitation. So, surveillance of a place. And elicitation means the gathering of information from the subject without being noticed by the subject that you are already gathering information from him. Kunwari, kinausap mo lang yung, yung tao. Saan ka nakatira? Akala niya nagiging friendly ka lang. Pero yun pala, may intention ka. Kinukuha mo na yung address ng subject mo. Diba? So that's an example of elicitation. We also have here surreptitious entry. Okay? So when we say surreptitious entry, uh, is this a criminal act? Or not? Plus, when we say surreptitious entry, you entered a private premises, a private establishment, or a private building belonging to your target without his consent. Is there a crime committed? That's what we call surreptitious entry. And you, if you come to observe, most of our covert intelligence involves crime. So, pagka nahuli yung tao dyan, eh, crime talaga yung ginagawa niya. Surreptitious entry pag hindi siya nahuli. Pero pagka nahuli siya, anong kaso niya? Trespassing. Di ba? Pagka hindi siya na-identify na police. Trespassing. Pumasok siya without the authority. Pumasok siya sa building without the authority of the owner. <laughs> without consent. So, employment of technical means such as bugging and tapping device. So, the wire tapping device and the bagging device. When you say bagging device, yan yung mga ina-attach natin sa isang place. Tapos, unknowingly, it records and transmit conversations pala without our knowledge. So, di nila alam, di natin alam, mayroon palang ibang tao na nakikinig sa ating discussion. Diba? So, bagging and tapping device. So, we also have here tactical interrogation. So, when we say tactical interrogation, we conduct this against arrested criminals. Diba? After dating mga po maka-arrest ng criminal, it is a subject natin sa interrogation. So, asan pa yung mga kasama mo? Kasi mamamatay ka, papatayin ka ng mga kasama mo, pagka hindi, natin sila ma hindi mo sila maunahan. Kaya asan sila? O, diba? So, tactical interrogation. Ilan sila? Asan sila nakapwesto? Ano yung mga armo? Ano yung mga weapons nila? Observation and description. We call it, in short, ODEX. Observation and description. ODEX. Parang yung PAX lang. Ilang PAX? Ilang persons? ODEX. DEX. Description. So, persons as sources of information. So, we have the informant net. So, when we say informant net, parang yung web lang ng spider, di ba? So, meron tayong sentro, tapos sa gilid ng web, we have lots of agents. 
So it is controlled. It is a controlled group of people who work through the direction of the agent handler. So the informants principal and cut out supply the agent handler directly or indirectly with intelligence information. So when we say directly, he reports directly the information to the agent handler. And when we say indirectly, he may be dropping that information to a certain safe house and ours, our agent handler will be the one to get that information from the drop house or safe house or through other means or through other persons. So we have here the informant or the asset. These are people selected as sources of information which could be voluntary or in consideration of a price. If this person gives information voluntarily with, uh, for a free, we call him informant. But if, we, if this person gives information for a reward or, or in exchange of something, we call him informer. So informant versus informer. We have already discussed that a while back. So criminal informant, types of informant. We have here first on the line is criminal informant. An informant who gives information to the police pertaining to the underworld about organized criminals with the understanding that his identity will be protected. Okay? So ang alam niya, hindi malalaman yung kanyang identity. So what type of information does he give about the underworld? Okay? about the organized criminal. So, yun yung kanyang binibigay na information. We call him criminal informant. So, next to criminal informant is the anonymous informant. So, those who give information to telephone with the hope that the informant can not be notified. Parang natapos na natin to kanina. Ah, tapos na pala to, di ba? Di ba we have already discussed this a while back class? Class. We have discussed this already. Bakit na ulit? Ah, ito ang wala. Ito ang wala. Are you still there, class? Yes po. Yes po, sir. Yes. Doon lang tayo sa hindi natin na-discuss. Yan. So, another type of informant is your Oops. A special informant. Those who give information concerning specialized cases only. And it is regarded as special treatment by the operatives. Yan. So, if the source of the information was treated specially, yan, has a special treatment or required a special treatment, we can call that informant as special informant or aside from that if that person is giving information pertaining to special like special cases we can also call that informant a special informant so yung mga mandidigaw ng mga subject para lang makakuha ng information So, another subtype of informant, we have the incidental informant. So, when we say incidental informant, a person who casually imparts information to the to an officer with no intention of providing providing subsequent information. Bakit? Wala na siyang ibang may bigay na information. Bakit? Incidental lang na nakagaroon siya ng information. Napadaan siya, nakita niya. May nangyaring temen, di ba? So, incidental informant. Pero mayroon pa ba siyang iba, ibibigay na information? Wala na. Diba? So, wala na siyang follow-up. Bakit? Yun lang yung nawitinsan niya eh. Incidentally. We also have a recruited informant. So, under recruited informant, kasama na rin dito yung, other, yung undercover agent. Diba? Nare-recruit natin yan. Yung infiltrating and penetrating agents. They are being recruited. So, a person who is selected, cultivated, and developed into a continuous source of information. Okay? So, we selected that person, we trained and cultivated that person 
and develop him into a continuous source of information. We call him a recruited informant. So categories of recruited informants, we have spontaneous or automatic informants. So when we say spontaneous, uh, these are informants who by their nature of their work or position in society have certain legal, moral, or ethical responsibilities to report information to the police. So when we say spontaneous or automatic informant, uh, they continuously give information. Why? Because it is their function. Okay? So, intelligence agent sila. O kaya, sila yung taga-consolidate ng mga data. So, whatever data they consolidate, they should furnish as a copy. Weekly, monthly, daily, or depending on the need. The, frequent, the frequency need. So, we also have the ordinary or the run-of-the-mill informants. Those under the compulsion to report information to the police. Ayan. So, they were compelled to report the information. We also have these special employee informants. These informants who are of a specific operational nature. Okay? So, special employee. Pwede na rin natin ibilang dito yung mga hackers, mga ITs. They can gather information regarding a person from their social media accounts. So we have here the informant recruitment process. Wait lang, kasal mo ba ito? Ah, hindi. Anyways, it's not a part of our discussion. So, allow me, ladies and gentlemen, to jump to the intelligence cycle for our last five minutes before we have our dinner. So, distribution and classification of information and documents. Ayun pa pala isa. Can you still recall your classified your classified matters? Naalala niyo pa, ladies and gentlemen? When we say classified matters, we are referring to the secret uh, to the top secret secret restricted and confidential, di ba? So ano ang kulay dapat ng top secret? Red, green, blue, or, or or black. Can you still recall that, ladies and gentlemen? When we say top secret, it involves national security and national policy, di ba? So, pagka ito na pa nahawakan ng criminal, endangered ang buong Pilipinas. Okay? That's why we call it Top secret. Its color is green. The color of its margin or borderline is green with the word top secret. Diba? Next is your secret. The color, the borders, the border color of this document is red. Diba? Top secret. Next is your Uh, confidential po. Confidential. Confidential ba? Yan. Next is your confidential. O oh, tama. Next is your confidential. The color, the color of its borderline or margin is, what's the color? Blue. Okay. So the color is blue. How about restricted? What is the color of the borderline of restricted documents? Are you sure it's black? Yes po. No. Wala. Walang borderline ang restricted. Walang borderline ang restricted. Pero yung color ng word na restricted, yun ang meron. Black. Okay? So don't get confused ha. Don't get confused. 
sa borderline ng restricted natin, wala siyang borderline. So, means to say, ang kulay niya, white. Okay? So, white ang kulay ng borderline, yung margin niya. Pero, yung lettering ng restricted, dun sa baba ng margin niya, restricted, nakalagay, black ang kulay nun, nung lettering. Okay? Did you get that? Yes, po, sir. Unlike your top secret, unlike your top secret, may borderline siyang green, tapos nakalagay dun sa baba niya, sa margin niya, lower margin niya, top secret. Kulay green silang pareho. Yung borderline plus the word. Same is true with secret. Ang borderline, kulay red, tapos may word dun sa bottom margin, nakalagay secret. Kulay red silang pareho. Sa same is true with the confidential. Ang borderline, kulay blue, tapos yung word confidential, sa baba, kulay blue red. Pero when it comes to restricted documents, ang borderline niya, walang kulay. So, white. Pero, yung word na restricted sa bottom margin, yun ang kulay black. Okay? So, if they are asking for the, the color of the borderline of the restricted document, anong sagot? Anong kulay ng borderline ng restricted documents? or restricted classified information. Plus, kasasabi ko lang, anong sagot? White. White ang borderline niya. Pero, yung lettering niya, yun ay black. black. Okay. So, uh, this is one of the most important topic, by the way. Allow me to share this for, mga, hindi tayo magtatagal dito, mga 5 minutes lang. So, we have here the word cover. Yung uh, na akong tulis. So, when we say cover, it uh, the means by which an individual group of organization conceals the true nature of its act and or existence from the observer. So, cover. Diba? Itatago niya yung identity niya. Diba? So, cover. And next to cover is the cover story. So, a, bio a biographical data. So, kung meron tayong biograph, uh, biography or resume na ginagamit natin pag nag-a-apply tayo, uh, meron din ta dapat tayong peke na biography. Yan. And this fake biography serves as your cover story. Okay? A biographical data through fictional that will portray the personality of the agent he assumed. So, nagpapanggap siyang agent, nagpapanggap siyang business agent, businessman, edi yun yung nakalagay dun sa uh, portfolio niya, sa cover story niya, sa fake biography niya, di ba? A scenario to cover up the operation. Okay? So, we call it cover story, a fake biography. Next to cover story is your cover support. So, what is this cover support? What is the purpose of the cover support? So, a cover support is an agent. Hmm. An agent assigned in the target areas with the primary mission of supporting the cover story. So, means to say, pagka malapit na na ma-burn out yung ating primary actor, malapit na ma-burn out yung kanyang cover story, here, here comes our cover support. So, ano may yari? Malapit siya sa, sa subject, tapos makikwento siya, ipaparinig niya sa mga sa mga suspecting persons na oh Pedro this is Pedro I have known him for so long to be a businessman and he had uh, these types of business for 20 for two decades now o, diba? so parang sinuportahan mo yung kanyang pagsisinungaling so that's the cover support okay he supports the cover story a secondary agent and next to cover support is your oops, undercover <coughs> assignment. Yan. So, undercover assignment, as uh, we read a uh, while back, is an investigative technique in which agent conceal his official identity and obtain information from that organization. Okay? So, parang kung nalilito kayo, parang ganito yung senaryo. Police talaga siya pero nagpanggap na criminal 
nagpakitang gilas sa mga kriminal na kaya niyang gumawa ng krimen, tapos nirecruit ng kriminal. Okay? So, narecruit siya ng kriminal. He is now working with the group of criminals, organized criminal group, organized crime group. However, his purpose is for investigation. He gathers information and uh, reports the information to the police. So, that's your undercover assignment. Until such time that he will be uh, able to gather a big time operation which they can now entrap. Diba? So, undercover assignment. So, we have lots of uses for undercover assignment. Security evaluation of every installation. Kunwari, mayroon tayong uh, target na building ng organized crime group na gustong pasukin. So, pwede, na, pwede niyang evaluate. Saan ba nakatutok yung mga camera? Saan ba yung mga pwedeng pasukan na walang nakabantay? Saan ba walang gwardiya? Saan ba tayo pwedeng dumaan na magkakasya tayo? Mayroon bang, ano, mayroon bang lagusan ng hangin or lagusan ng tubig, lagusan ng basurahan na pwede nating daanan? Di ba? So, security evaluation of every installation. Gain confidence of suspended persons. Now, if our, if our objective is to recruit from that target OCG, eh, pwede rin to. Piliin natin yung mga nasuspende na, na mga member ng target organized crime group and we recruit this person. So, the possibility is gusto nilang maghiganti kaya pwede natin madali silang ma-recruit. And another advantage to this is they have, they already have the necessary information that we need. Diba? Hindi pa tayo magpapakahirap na mag-conduct ng surveillance. Bakit? Kasi alam na alam na niya. Pwede na niyang ibigay yung mga information na kailangan natin. So, agent penetration. Yan. Yung re- Yung re-recruit natin tapos uh, saka natin pa babalikin sa pinanggalingan niyang crime, organized crime group. Verify information from human resources. Kasi lahat ng mga kwento na nanggagaling sa tao, pwedeng chismis lang, di ba? So we have to verify those through undercover assignment and uncover concealed identity. We know for a fact that the NPAs are one, di ba? Lahat ng mga NPA may mga fake names yung mga yan. Alias Badong, di ba? Mga ganyan. Same is true with the organized crime group. Pag Pagsali nila sa organized crime group, mababago rin yung kanilang mga pangalan, yung mga identity. Instead ng pangalan is John Roberts, pwedeng gawing iba, basta ibahin. Okay? So, to uncover the concealed identity of those persons. So, undercover is an investigative technique in which the investigator conceals his true identity and status and adopts an assumed role in order to obtain access to information or evidence which would be which would not be available through other investigative means so in short this is the last resort bakit last resort kasi ang pinaka pinaka delikado dito is pagka na burn out yung ating undercover agent ang kapalit niyan yung buhay niya okay hindi siya hahayaang maka alis ng buhay yan papatay nila yan pag na burn out okay so that's too risky so let's now move on with the intelligence cycle so fictional agents kulang pala yung oras natin actually meron pa dapat tayong subject na isa eh we should be also tackling the uh, ano ito? Drugs. Vice and drug education. Dapat na yun yun. So anyways, hindi natin natakal. Hanapin na lang natin ng schedule. So, the intelligence cycle. Ito yung specific na nakalagay kasi dito sa newest table of specification nyo. Dapat isang buong araw talaga yung uh, criminal investigation. Tapos isang buong araw din yung intelligence. Okay. 
kukula kulang kabil ka ng oras but anyways we are working with what we have so baka yun lang yung resources natin kaya pagtsagaan na natin oh nawala yung intelligence cycle wait lang so what is the intelligence cycle class Sir, excuse po. Nawala po yung slide. Nawala ba? Oh, wait lang, wait lang. Okay, wait lang. Saan ko ba nalagay kasi yun? Nahanap ko lang kung saan ko rin nalagay. Saan wala dito? Wait lang class ha. Ah, okay. Wait lang class. Ano po yung... Ah, uh, class, talagang talagang isang subject half day talaga sa inyo, no? Ang schedule. Hindi hindi pwedeng i-whole day. Kunwari itong CDI 1, kukunin niyo lang ng half day. Sir, so, yes. Pati po dun sa previous review po. Ay, ganun talaga. Ah, kaya kailangan talagang piliin lang yung ano, yung i-discuss pala. So anyways, uh, one is, uh, one of the most important topic we have to discuss is the intelligence cycle. It's only referring to four phases naman to which the end is the dissemination and use of that intelligence cycle. Pero pakita ko lang yung picture sa inyo. In case na hindi nyo pa na-discuss. Ano talaga? Can you still recall the intelligence cycle class? So, in the intelligence cycle, the main objective is the mission. Okay? So, mission yun yung pinakagitna ng intelligence cycle. We call it intelligence cycle kasi pabilog. Iikot siya. Okay? So, wala dito sa presentation ko eh. Alam ko nakalagay yun. So, kaya siya cycle. Iikot. So, sa gitna, from the center, would be our mission. Okay? In lieu of the mission, pwede rin ilagay natin doon, commander's need. Okay, so yun ang maging concentration ng intelligence cycle natin. Now, from the topmost, yung pinakataas, we will be starting from the collection or gathering of information. Now, after we have gathered or collected information, we will be proceeding with the second stage. So, what is the second stage, class? Mm 
it's not yet the it's not yet the interpretation analysis okay so we will be doing the analysis of that gathered information okay so we will be doing the analyzation after the analyzation we will be interpreting we will be evaluating and interpreting the data so how do we evaluate we evaluate by tagging that information so if that information came from government agency and it was confirmed by other agencies its tag would be a1 diba alam niyo ba yun naalala niyo pa however if the information came out of nowhere it can be tagged as f6 diba reliability cannot be judged and uh, truthfulness cannot be judged diba so f6 yan and after its interpretation lalabas when we say interpretation kasi bibigyan mo ng meaning yun di ba so that's the third phase of intelligence cycle evaluation and interpretation so kung ito yung nakuha nating information anong ibig niyang sabihin so in your research its counterpart is conclusion okay so parang sinasagot niya yung mission natin kung ano yung nakasad sa mission so where is the where is the address of our target? So kung yun ang nakalagay sa mission, so dito sa dito sa ating interpretation dapat yun ang nakalagay. The address of the of the subject or the target is at yun. So yun dapat ang nakalagay. Now after that interpretation of data, the data or the, the intelligence will now be disseminated. Yan. So this is now the final. Uh, the fourth pala, the fourth phase of the intelligence cycle. Okay? So, this intelligence will now be forwarded to the end user. Okay? So, we call that process dissemination and use. We will disseminate it to the proper office who, need, who needs it for their use, for it to be used during their operation. Okay, so that is supposed to be the final phase of the intelligence cycle. However, since it is a cycle, it will be returning to gathering of intelligence again. Okay, so babalik ulit siya sa phase 1, gathering of intelligence. So that's your intelligence cycle. Okay, so it must be directed towards the mission or in lieu of the mission the needed information or the commander's need okay so doon lahat ng mga i-collect natin na data i-analyze natin na data i-interpret natin at i-evaluate na data must be directed towards the mission or the commander's need dapat lahat wala dapat kasalo, kasama doon na hindi naman kailangan okay When. So, we have four phases of the intelligence cycle. First is the gathering or collection of information. Second is the analysis. Third is the evaluation and interpretation. And fourth is the dissemination and use. Okay? So, that's all for the intelligence cycle, ladies and gentlemen. Do you have a question before we... Dismiss class. Plan to sir. None. Nine so sir. Okay, thank you very much for your active participation and see you all tomorrow. Let's uh, have our day. Okay? So you are all excused, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, thank you very much and good evening. Thank you for your thank you for okay. you're all excused. Thank you.